All right, from outside Seattle, this is special correspondent Vanessa Lee for TaiwaneseAmerican.org. Tonight I'm here with members of the band called The Slants. And first of all, I'll just have you introduce yourselves if you'd like. Sure. Hey guys, I'm Tyler Chen. I play drums for The Slants. My name is Simon, and I play bass. I'm Johnny. I play guitar. Hey guys, I'm Aaron. I'm the front man. Play the microphone. Sure. Well, the idea for The Slants kind of started out. I would say a couple years ago, um, I remember the movie Kill Bill just came out on DVD and I was watching it and there's a scene where the crazy 88s just start walking into the restaurant and I just thought, man, that looks really tough and awesome. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool if there was a group of all Asians on, in a band that kind of had that kind of presence because you didn't see a lot of um, Asian American acts around. So that's when I started this idea. I started putting out tons of posters, flyers, classified ads, trying to find anybody and everybody. In fact, um, a couple years before Tyler joined our band, he actually tried out for the band. We started talking. He ended up going a, di a different direction, but we stayed really good friends, played a bunch of shows together. And, um, you know, next thing you know, the right people just started coming in. And, you know, especially once we got Aaron, things really started moving. We started writing a ton of songs. And, you know, within three months of our first show, we released an album. We started going on tour. Um, about two and a half years later, seven tours, three albums. Uh, that's where we're here today. So we've been pretty busy. Um, when we were kids, there'd be this really hateful rhyme, Chinese, Japanese, dirty knees, look at these, people pull their eyes back and make fun of me when I was younger. And other, and other Asians have heard that too. It's even used in the movie uh, that Rob Zombie did, that The Devil's Rejects, they used it in that movie. So it was kind of hurtful, but we take that, kind of making our anthem as like, that we support and we're proud of our slanted eyes and that's who we are and it's awesome, not something to be ashamed of. There's also been a lot of positive responses from the Asian community itself. I used to get a lot of um, MySpace messages and emails to the band saying, hey, you know, thank you guys for doing what you do because we never really had like an Asian hero, like an Asian band, that a role model that could do this. And for me, it's always really cool to see like Asian students in the audience singing our songs back to us, especially um, like Sakura Sakura, where it basically takes ownership of the fact that we have slanted eyes and then we want to make it something beautiful. Tell us a little bit about your music training and did you have any of the stereotypical Asian Taiwanese parents? Uh, did you play, say, violin or piano? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's funny that you ask because um, I, well, I actually grew up in a, a biracial family. Uh, my dad's from Canton, China, and my mom's a, a white girl from South Dakota. Um, but anyway, they, they did want me to play piano, and uh, I would be in the music store for my lessons, and I'd disappear, and they would always find me in the drums because I would just sit there and like look at the drums and <laughs> not actually hit them. They were just the uh, most magical thing, so I always wanted to play drums since I was a kid. And uh, um, my, my training covers a lot of different genres of music, everything from uh, blues and classical to heavy metal and rock and jazz, and um, I enjoy it all. I kind of grew up with, I guess, in some ways a very typical uh, first generation born um, Asian American family, and other ways not. Um, I did start music as a very young person, like I think five or six years old, my parents wanted me to, to learn piano. However, I went, in, went into the music store and I just, I wanted the guitar. I fell in love with it. I was like, I want to be like Elvis. I want that rock and roll. Um, and what's funny is they, they gave, so they're like, okay, we can start you on guitar. And they were talking to the guy at the music store and they gave me this like smaller guitar and, uh, because I mean, I, you know, was just a little kid. It turned out it wasn't even a guitar. It was a ukulele. <laughs> I didn't even know for, for a while. And then um, you know, I, we, I took lessons for about a year or so, stopped, and it wasn't until I was 10 that I picked up the bass um, and just kind of took a bunch of lessons and went from there. I mean, I, I was trained by uh, a jazz bassist, and um, he was really heavy into music theory, composition, and I think that's really helped me a lot, even though I went into like do like punk rock projects and all that stuff because I understood the way uh, music scales flow, to get, to flow together and how it kind of creates... Uh, more interesting bass lines and so um, yeah I just took all that knowledge threw in a little bit of like 80s synth pop and here we are with the slants <laughs> um, my older brother got stuck playing piano but I got the guitar <laughs> um, no my family was pretty laid back it wasn't so strict it was um, you know my dad's Filipino my mom's Hispanic so it was pretty laid back but 
Um, I'm just all self-taught, no lessons. Well, actually, uh, John and I used to be in a band together called the Rockaway Teens, and we really needed... Then we grew up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We we really needed a bass player at the time, and he was learning guitar, and so him and I switched instruments. I played guitar in the band, and we started teaching him the bass, Um, and so it it was kind of funny. Years later, when we needed a guitar player, and I convinced him to move up to Portland, um, he sat in with the band once, and we, we all loved it, and so he just stayed since then. Uh, two of my three sisters got to learn the piano, and I was kind of bummed I didn't. I wasn't really going that direction, though. I played the French horn and trumpet and did choir all my life in junior high and high school. So um, I can't play the French horn and trumpet anymore. But maybe if I took lessons again, I could pick it up pretty quickly. But definitely choir was nice. Yeah, the the next album will have French horn on it, I guess. I think trumpet would be more rocking, though. But yeah, so just choir and stuff like that. And I learned all my music from orchestra and jazz band so um you know i've always been really passionate about all the bands that i've been in um and i think it almost every single band i went in it was like a different step in my career the last group i was uh, playing in called the stivs i mean we had um we were pretty successful at least in the scene that we were doing but um i guess as far as like a camaraderie sense this band it, it honestly feels like a family i mean we've been on the road so much together and We've been through so so many members, um, you know. It's 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 really nice, and I would say that right now, the just the four of us. Well, and Ken, inc- if you include Ken, our our drum tech, or and everything tech, really, um, it really feels like a family. I mean, and like a family, we argue a lot, and and we also play a lot, and we get along well together. But I think that's one of the great things about it. We can be honest with each other and take it. Um, you know, sometimes we get hurt feelings or whatever, but. Everybody in this group knows that everyone's intention is to take this band as far as we can go. And we're all here to support each other no matter what in our personal lives and our work lives to, to make that happen. And so that's something I, d- I definitely appreciate as a band member and as just a member of this group. You have to agree. Um, playing with previous bands is more like, you know, a garage band. And if you're lucky, you get to play the talent show at your school or something. And you know, with this band, we've we've toured the country many times. We've been flown out. It just makes you feel really good knowing that people want that service from us. And you know, playing with these guys, it's it feels like a family. And it's it's it, it's incredible when you see other people going out, you know, going on on the line for us. Like we have Ken, and we have certain other people that are outside of this band that really help us be successful. Um, well, uh, uh, you know, if if music is something that you love. Um, don't let anything uh, get in your way of that, um, and you know, uh, you know, listen to a lot of music um, so you can d- diversify. Go watch live music; um, that's where you can learn a lot from it. Um, surround yourself with other friends that play music because um, you can learn a lot from them. And uh, and really, uh, you know, if you want to um, do more with music, um, you know, make it a goal and 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 do it. Yeah. I definitely got to say stay positive and surround yourself with people that are positive and uplifting. Don't let people um, talk negatively about it. You know, a lot of times I compare being a, um, the chances of being a professional music, uh, musician like trying to be a professional athlete. Very few get there, even though a lot of people want to do it. But if it's your passion, just can, go ahead and pursue it and continue doing so. Um, also, just uh, as a very practical way of doing it, be sure to read as much as you can about business, about marketing, about how to manage a band. Don't just be like an artist because someday you do have to treat it like a business and find out how you can create a sustainable living so you can continue to do what you love doing. I think that's something that a lot of musicians and artists ignore and kind of forget about. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tonight. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right.